All right, I'm back for Dostoevsky's ongoing coverage of Frag Chicago 2024. I'm here with Rush, uh, uh, coming off of their win against Akimbo a couple minutes ago. So to start, it's very rare we see a major winner at one of these smaller local Fragadelphia events. Uh, how does it feel to be back playing a local LAN like this, considering it's been probably going on 10 years since you played a LAN of this scale? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call the last, I think it was Fragadelphia 17, like the big one. I played that with EG Black, but that, I guess, wasn't more local because there were some European teams like Apex. But yeah, the last one other than that would have been maybe like SoCal Revival Land, which was 2014, and I played with Nitro back then. Like we were like two 19-year-old, 20-year-olds. So yes, I, I don't mind it, honestly because everyone's pretty chill, and um, I feel like yeah, normally you think maybe you get like swamped or like uh, people ask like for pictures, but they're really chill and they're here to play. So that's what they're focused on. It seems like, but. I don't mind being here as well because even though the price was lower, it's like good for just experience for the team and uh, good for our like no, our, our valve points in general, the ranking points. Like any amount of price pool you win in any tournament is important, so that's the main reason we're here. Uh, and with that, what have you thought about the level of competition? Of course, you've played many of the, these teams before in ESL Challenger League, but you've had a chance to play some more advanced teams that you might not normally you know square off against. So, what's been your impression of the competition here? Um, I mean, it's pretty much expected, like, they give us a little bit of trouble, but in the end of the day, we should always win most of these matches. There's a few competitive teams here, like, um, what's the OG Wizards team, Lag? Like, they've uh, gotten us close in scrims, uh, maybe they've won scrims before, I don't remember really, probably. But, uh, so they're a good team, and obviously Elevate, or I guess they're Timberman now. They're going to be probably the hardest team here. Uh, there's some other pugs, like, with CXCI and stuff, but that's different. Uh, so overall, I think we should be favorites, and if we don't win pretty much anything else, so less than that is probably a disappointment to, to us. Uh, so you recently came into this team about four months ago. Uh, since then, you've been working under uh, Carson, who has been in IGL for about two years now, you know, having taken over the role from uh, Cynic and then from Stamina. Um, as someone who you know, you're now serving under and used to play against, what do you think of him as an IGL and how he's developed since he sort of uh, you know, started off in that role only a couple years ago? Yeah, I mean, I don't really remember much playing against him because, like, like you said, he wasn't calling. So since I joined, it's just been fine. I mean, honestly, honest, I feel like he's, he knows what he wants most rounds, and I think the only struggles we have maybe is mid-round sometimes. But that's more like it shouldn't always be him that gives uh, like a mid-round call. Uh, this should be uh, input from given from everybody across the map because he can't see everything, especially on T side. I mean, even though he might be in the pack, the edge players should give a lot of information, which we try to do. But overall, it's been, I think he's only gotten better since I've joined, so. Mm -hmm. And and with that, um, Nouns is sort of in a situation right now because of missing out on a couple qualifiers that this will be the last land they play before they go to Shanghai for the uh, major, RMR qual major RMRs. Nouns is no stranger to the RMRs, having played, I believe, in every single one since the org signed uh, Squirtle Squad, but they've never been able to really get over that hump. Um, with you now in the lineup, like, what is the priorities for this team to ensure that when they go to Shanghai, they're there to make it to the major? I think the biggest thing we're going to focus on is a boot camp in Europe. Uh, I think they've boot camped there before, before I joined, but it's been a while. I think uh, going there for seven days, one to two weeks basically, would be really important for the growth because, I mean, any practice, they have some good practice sometimes, like if Complexity's uh, back at home playing or M80's there. Um, but other than that, it's like legacy. But when it, they're all traveling for events, there's not, there's practice, but usually you play the same teams. and. It gets into a weird state where you play the same team over and over on the same map, and then it's almost like you're countering each other in the scrims, which is not really conducive for just growing and trying things out. So yeah, Euro European boot camp basically is what I'm, the summary of this is that going to be the biggest thing, and trying to glean as much as we can and grow as much as we can in that small time frame before the RMR. Looking at the NA scene, some of the teams you'll have to face off against at that RMR are squads like uh, Complexity, Wild Card, uh, Complexity and Wildcard, especially who recently made those two changes to bring in international elements. Um, it seems like that a lot of the squads around Nouns have been improving at a rapid rate. Uh, how, how do you feel about how the other teams in that sort of EC level are growing recently? And do you guys worry about ne needing to keep pace with them? Or, like, do you feel like it's a healthy rivalry right now? Yeah, I would say Complexity is above us for sure. Um, I don't. Even you want to talk about Liquid because we have never played them, but I'm sure they're definitely above us right now. Uh, I think Wildcard, they beat us in the EPL qualification, but that was with the different players before they got uh, Uzi and Susp. But we played them in ECL and it was pretty close. And in the scrims we played against them, it's pretty back and forth, honestly. And same thing for M80. Every time we play them, it's fairly close. Uh, so I'm, I would say like maybe we're a little bit below them still, but not as far as maybe people think. I think. Uh, 
I thought they were going to be a lot worse, honestly, when they lost Malbs, M80. But Lake seems to have integrated really well, and I think that he's a really good player and he's going to grow with them. And obviously the Europeans are really good as well. So I think it's we're pretty close to them, and the only teams that are kind of like a level above us right now is Complexity and uh, Liquid, which Liquid, I don't know for sure, but just assuming based on the results. But yeah, it's we play them a lot, so I have a good idea of it. Uh, looking at your trajectory since your uh, since you originally joined Evil Geniuses with sort of the automatic Stewie uh, lineup, you've been playing sort of at the NA tier two level for a while now with EG Black, then Party Astronauts briefly, and now with Nouns. Um, what has that been like for you? Has there been moments of frustration that you haven't been able to sort of return to tier one, or what's your general take on the fact that you're sort of that you're now a, in the uh, tier two NA mix? I, mean, I, I thought about quitting after um, EG Black when I didn't get promoted with the rest of the guys. That was kind of like a blow for me, but uh, I got a, re a reinvigoration of the game when CS2 came out and a little bit after that. I just was, having, was playing for fun and I am like, maybe I should try playing for, you know, for, for real. So I can't just go to Tier 1 after not playing for seven months. It's not going to work. So I'm not like, Tier 1's the goal. I just want to be in a squad that I think can go far and has potential. Um, you know, if you have players that you know that have it, like that factor of like, I know they'll be Tier 1 eventually. And I feel like a lot of players on this team has that. So I'm really happy to be here because it's, I think they're only going to grow over time and I can help them grow in that process. Mm -hmm. Uh, during your time away from uh, your playing role, you spent a while with MindBody Esports. What can you tell me about your time with him, and like what impact does it have with you? Has it had with you long term? I just was kind of feeling out what I wanted to do, like if I wasn't going to play, and that was one of the like venues I guess I was going down. And I know Edward pretty uh, closely, the owner CEO of MindBody Esports, and he's a really really cool, really chill guy. And he always told me, like when I was playing with him and other teams, that like one one day, like if you're ever done playing, come work for me. And I was I thought he was like trolling me, but he was he was serious. And it was more like a mentorship thing. Like I was just kind of learning from him. I wasn't really super involved yet. I was just kind of sitting sitting in with him on calls. Funnily enough, I actually worked with Nouns. So I worked with some of the guys that I'm actually playing with. And um, it was hard not to talk about CS because in these like when you're trying to do uh, performance coaching, usually trying to fix out of game stuff to like make them better in game, but. Because I know so much, it was hard for them not to ask me CS questions all the time. But yeah, it was it was great. I really love Edward, and uh, maybe in the future I'll go back to that. But I think um, it was maybe it was important for me to do that to realize I'm not just done playing yet. And you know, with that, so you worked with the Nouns for a while uh, with that roster. Now you're part of the squad. I feel like everyone knows a lot about Carson as the IJL, Junior as the Opera, and sort of George as the Explosive Star Rifler. But we don't hear as much about uh, CJ and what role he has on the team. Uh, he's someone who's been around for almost as long as you have. You know, with those uh, with those days with um, you know he was playing in EPL years ago, and now he's finally now he's back with his Nouns squad. And he's been a consistent piece on that roster for a long time. But like I previously mentioned, there's not a lot of discussion around what kind of player he is and like what role he fills on this team. Despite being, you know, there for a long time, so he's clearly integral. What what can you tell me about CJ in this squad? I feel like CJ is just like the best way I can put it is like he's a soldier. Like he'll never really like stray from the the path. He doesn't let his emotions get the best of him. Um, he does what he's told, and yeah, he doesn't really complain, which is really important. And honestly, it can be hard to find. He has probably one of the best attitudes I've played with in terms of his mentality overall. So yeah, I can see why he would stay based on that. And on top of that, he has real, a lot of individual skill. Like he plays a lot of important spots and he will multi-frag all the time. So if he's on, we're pretty much always going to win. And then the final big change that Nouns had made was replacing Semphis as the head coach with uh, Adran. As someone who, as someone who is obviously known as like one of the greatest NA coaches of all time for his achievements with Liquid, um, and someone who is probably almost a, a rival coach to you during your days on Cloud9 versus Liquid, uh, not not quite, but yeah. general generally someone who is in your periphery for a long time during your tier one playing career. Uh, what's it like working with him now as a sort of mind as a mind for the game, and what can what can he what does he offer now to hopefully take him to the next level? That's just very interesting because I always played against him. I never really played ever in a team with him or with him in a coaching role or anything. I've always played like, versus him, so that's interesting and to see what, how he works as a human and as a coach. And I think he brings a lot of stability to the team. Uh, a lot of young guys on the team, so they can, you know, some attitudes can get out of control, and he tries to keep that in check, make sure that we're prepared for not just practice, but also matches with game plans. And he does a lot of work outside the game, obviously, as a coach, because we don't have an analyst, so he has to do a lot of that preparation. And I feel like the fact that he has, like, a, a family at home and he still does all this and travels and stuff is really respectable. So he's putting in the time, and I really enjoy having him as a coach. I think he's, he's good for not just them, but for me as well. 
And then final question before I let you go. So you mentioned Timmerman's probably the most likely team you're going to be in the finals. Uh, when it really comes down to the wire, are you guys afraid at all, or is it going to be a pretty easy uh, day for now and tomorrow? I don't think it will ever be easy, especially in the environment we're in, like Atlanta environment where, to be honest, the PCs aren't that great, but we're all in the same playing field, so it's not worth complaining about because we're all playing on the same low FPS or whatever problems there might be. I think, uh, you know, nerves can get the best of them or us. It just depends on who starts out strong and can maintain their mentality throughout. Uh, but I do think overall, based on the results we've had versus them, we should win. And if we don't, it'll be a disappointment, but also it's not impossible by any means. All right, so that is uh, Nouns Rush, who, will, who on, in all honesty, we'll likely see in the finals tomorrow. And then before that, they'll be heading to Shanghai in short order. So thank you so much for your time, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you.